Well, now, the Apostle Paul taught that we're justified by faith. And in Romans 1.17, he said the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now, any elementary Greek learner can find out that faith to faith is what the Greek says. And I get so dismayed at Modern translations, you try to interpret that. The translator obviously didn't know what it meant. And they they say something else. If they just left it alone, it's in the authorized version. Faith to faith. Why? To know what Paul meant, he used the phrase, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Look through Romans and see when he uses the phrase righteousness of God in Romans 3.22. He says, the righteousness of God is revealed And here's the way it's put. Through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Jesus first believed. And he believed perfectly. Jesus lived by a perfect faith. His faith is referred to in Hebrews 2.13, quoting Isaiah. I will put my trust in him. In Matthew 5.17, Jesus made what Martin Lloyd-Jones said is the most stupendous claim he ever made. He said, I've come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Nobody had ever made a claim like that. I have come to fulfill the law. How would he do it? Well, through his perfect faith, He kept all the Ten Commandments and over 2,000 pieces of Mosaic legislation by his obedience, his perfect faith, and his sacrificial death on the cross. The reason Paul said the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith is that we also must believe. His faith must be ratified by our faith. And so our faith then is what completes the deal. Had the righteousness of God simply been revealed through the faith of Jesus, end of story, then all would be saved. Everybody would be saved. And the universalists would be right. Jesus died for the whole world, the whole world saved. But that's not what Paul said. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Our faith ratifies his faith. And in that moment, our faith counts for righteousness. Now, the Apostle Paul considered Abraham as his exhibit A uh, for the proof. Uh, Lest somebody accuse Paul of teaching something different. And so in Romans 4 that I read earlier, uh, there's a quotation from Genesis 15, verse 6. Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him as righteousness. Now here's the story. Go back uh, about uh, 37, 13, 3800 years ago. Uh, 1700 years BC. Abraham and Sarah have been married. They're getting older. She's having no children. And Abraham's a very wealthy man. And he becomes very discouraged And one day he says, Lord, you've given me all this wealth. What am I going to do with it? Am I to give it to my servant, Eliezer? God said, Abraham, go outside your tent. Look up. Count the stars. And Abraham begins to count them. I lost count. Let me start all over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lord, there's two. I can't count them. There must be dozens. There must be hundreds. We now know there are millions. And God said to Abraham, so will your seed be. Abraham might have said, Lord, don't play games with me. 
Lord, don't tease me. Don't joke. This is not funny. You know, Sarah's not having children. I'm getting older. And you're wanting me to believe that my seed will be like the stars in the heaven? But you know what? Abraham believed it. And God said, good. For that, I count you righteous. Now, Abraham may not have felt righteous. Sarah might have looked at him and said, you don't look righteous to me. But Paul said, God imputed to Abraham righteousness. And that righteousness would be his forever. No matter how many mistakes Abraham would make, and he made them, that would not be lost. And so Paul now comes with this gospel. The God-man died on a cross, shed his blood. And because we put our trust in him, our faith counts for righteousness. And so the gospel is, we say to anybody, no matter how deeply you sinned, you look to Christ. Put all of your eggs into one basket. Jesus' death. That person out there might say, you must be joking. You expect me to believe that? But there are those who say, I believe that. And for those who say, I believe that, God says, good. I count you righteous. You may not feel righteous. Those who know you may not think you're righteous. They say, you don't look righteous to me. But God says you are. And that's how you know you're going to go to heaven. And I want you to know that you will be no more righteous 50 years later than the day God first put righteousness to your credit. And so Abraham became Paul's example. And then Paul makes a big point. I don't have time to go into this detail, but just to simply say that this was before he was circumcised because there were Jews living who thought, Circumcision has got to precede any kind of favor with God. And Paul says, not so. Abraham, who had no background at all, no training, he just believed. And the truth is, he was saved. Well, now that is the first reason you can take this teaching to the bank and know because of being justified by faith, not by works, you're saved. 